Now, thanks for staying was with us. If you're just tuning in, we're discussing Nigeria and her independence, and we have Cheta Wanze with us. Now, remember, you can join this conversation. Tweet at us at Plus TV Africa or at Ways Show Africa One with the hashtag Ways, or you send us an SMS or WhatsApp to zero eight one eight zero three eight four six six three. Okay, Cheta, you were going to talk about cocoa before we went on the break. Can you quickly just wrap up on that um, conversation before Sanzi comes to you? Okay, so the point is that the British were not uh, were not interested in developing the North. As far as they were concerned, it was barren territory. The only interest that they really had was in keeping it out of French hands. But in the South, you had palm oil in the Southeast and cocoa in the Southwest. Um, so, for example, Thin in the Just Place who came in 1922, mm -hmm. which was more or less as in decades after colonialism had been done. So you you had that situation where the relationship between the British and us was purely exploitative, yeah. nothing more. It was about what they could get. Um, developing the people, if anything, was uh, was a side was a side effect of every of that relationship. So um, the overarching point is that we should not look at colonialism with uh, with tainted spectacles, which rose tainted spectacles. It was bloody, it was brutal, and we are still living with the effects. Wow. Okay, okay so, um, yes, what I'd like to ask you, Cheta, is about Nigerian identity. Obviously, like every normal human being, I believe, if you must follow a leader, there has to be a vision um, that you aspire to. I remember we had a guest, uh, was it PK, who was yes. saying that part of the major challenges Nigeria has as a nation, and it's now trickling down to generations after, including Generation X or Z, yes. whichever, whichever it is. The problem is that we do not have a Nigerian dream, which we all can align and say, okay, this is our purpose for existence. Now, I would like to get um, your view on that. Is it true that Nigeria doesn't have um a dream and if it is what what is what is the remedy to that how do we like come together because lately we've been seeing a lot of disunity you were talking about marginalization and how we were you know put together in a way that a lot of people are not happy about what's our way forward so the first thing that we need if we are to create a nigerian identity is a national mythology um, we need something that all of us can buy into. Um, as an example, the Americans whom we love talking about have the whole George Washington crossing the Delaware River in that boat, this, uh, and all, all of that nonsense. The truth is, it didn't happen. But the Americans have built this whole myth around it. They built this whole myth around the, the Patsy Betty or whatever is her name, how she sued the flag, and how when the British uh, tried to destroy Baltimore and all the bombs, uh, the flag was still standing there. It's in their national anthem. Yeah. We, have, we don't have one common strand. The French, for example, have a national myth. It's water their fields in blood, which is part of the French national anthem. It's about watering, uh, watering the, uh, our fields with their blood. It's about the Germans. They, we've never had... Um, that's one thing that brings us all together. Um, and as a matter of fact, the only thing that we that we have or that we have that brings us all together is the super egos. Super and we've mismanaged that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we've, we've mismanaged that. The super egos are not doing very well. Mm -hmm. If we if the super egos were doing very well on a consistent basis you will find that the Nigerian identity will actually come out a lot more. Mm, yeah. Unfortunately, as well, since 2015, we've had the most divisive government in place. Um, there's uh, something that I have been doing for quite a while, um, which is tracking, and this is uh, a, it's an unscientific survey, but I've been tra tracking inter-ethnic marriages, and it's on the decline. Inter-ethnic marriages have been on the decline. That's for me, is an interesting barometer into the state of national unity, mm. that people are retreating into their shells. Mm. But the real issue is about economic integration. Now, can you do a road trip in Nigeria, really? Mm. 
The all. answer is no. Not at all. Exactly. I have done I have done road trips in Nigeria because of the nature of my job. So I can tell you how bad the road network is. The road network in Nigeria is very bad, which means that most people will rather stay where they are. Because most people cannot afford flights. Hmm. If we had a situation where the man in Medjugorje can trade with the man in Port Harcourt and then trade with the man in Lagos, then we will, this whole national unity thing will begin to dissipate. It will begin, we'll begin to get more integrated. Because if people who don't trade with each other end up killing each other, it's one or the other. Yeah. Now you have a situation where we have a very unbalanced country. Um, you, it takes at least, if you are driving from Port Harcourt to Meduguri along the same eastern trajectory, it takes you somewhere between 16 and 24 hours. And that is if you are lucky, if you don't run into security issues. What that means is that the man in Meduguri is separated by artificial factors from the man in Port Harcourt. So he looks at the man in Port Harcourt with distrust. If, on the other hand, he had to come to Port Harcourt regularly to buy stuff from the man in Port Harcourt and take back to Meduguri, he will begin to understand the man in Port Harcourt a lot more. Mm. And there is your national unity. Mm. So we need a, economic integration. But economic integration only comes with infrastructural integration. Absolutely. And a very good, exa a very good example I can give is Europe. So between the fall of Constantinople to the Ottoman Empire in 1453 and the end of the Second World War in 1945, which is a period of uh, 492 years or, or thereabouts, you had no less than 70 wars in Western Europe. Mm. No less. Which is an average of a war every uh, uh, of, um, of a war every 10 years or something like that. Now, since the Marshall Plan was instituted at the end of the Second World War. There has been zero war in Western Europe. Because now, Western Europe is so tightly integrated economically that the Frenchman who used to say the only good German is a dead German, now designs his cars in, in Paris and builds them in Berlin. Mm. You can see that whenever a French president comes into power now, or whenever a German chancellor comes into power, the first place they visit is either Paris or Berlin. Mm -hmm. they, swap, they, ask, they cannot do without each other anymore. Yeah. Why? Because they trade with each the other economic so regularly. That yeah. it's economic integration, it is so tightly interwoven. But it, costs, it is cheaper for you to bring something, to bring a good, all the way from Beijing, nine time zones away, to Lagos than it is for you to carry that same goods from Lagos to Cam in the same country. Okay, so we had the Honorable Minister for Works yesterday, and I can tell you, well, I don't know about the parts of um, Nigeria that you have driven on. Um, I, I always take my children to school in Ocean State, and I know they've done some very good, I mean, my husband commutes every day to, I mean, Ogun State, and there's a lot of work going on. So I, I, I hear you that the roads are bad, but I think they, there's a lot of work going on on, on the roads currently. So let us probably give them time a bit. But I know what you've said is very important, which We've is the given integration. Them time since, since okay. 19, uh, I know, Cheta. Okay, but we have a we have a comment. Um, one of our regular viewers, I must take his comment today because he sent messages yesterday that I couldn't take. Oh, he says, Good evening. Why are our leader why our leaders can okay, why our leaders couldn't follow the master plan set by independent fighters like Awolowo? I think he's asking, why can't they follow the master plan set by Awolowo uh, 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 and Azikiwe? Lagos is improving because every governor follows the master plan. The Western world followed their, uh, their ancestors' master plan till date and still honor them till date. If you look at the principle of what he's saying about master plan, I know in Dubai, for instance, Lagos, you know, yeah. there is a master plan. This is where we are going. So anybody that comes into power is Aligned almost like a it. plug and play. Chata, why are you, why are you laughing? Please. <laughs> because of our lack of continuity in Nigeria. Eh? Why are you laughing? I'm trying to control myself. Yeah, please control yourself, but tell me, you know. <laughs> Don't control yourself. Tell us what's on your mind. So do, what do you want to say concerning this uh, comment from Ade? He, he watches, he's from the UK, yeah. Let's ask ourselves honestly, is Lagos really improving? 
Okay, you that left Magudo this year at four o'clock and only got to the studio at seven thirty today, will you say they got to say Hmm. We are breathing. See, let's let let's be serious. This, mm -hmm. this is part of the, my problem with us. We we are pathologically dishonest people. Ooh. All of our indices are falling down. Every the as in the only this is that the only index that is that is that is improving is population. Hmm. Every other thing is every other thing is in reverse. And then then we are talking of master plan. What is the Lagos master plan? Eco Atlantic. Hmm. Please let's be serious. Let's be serious. Now, if we are a serious people, oh by the way, a drive that I cannot resist. The Lagos state government has been building a what a how many kilometer real life ball since. Forever. As in for almost 20 years now. Mm -hmm. So really. Now, if um, we're serious people, the first thing we should be talking of is real, not rude. Mm -hmm. Real. That is what will that is what will speed the connection of the country together. Absolutely. Not roads. I mean, the, the roads are the, the roads, one of the problems that the roads suffer from is unnecessarily heavy use. Mm -hmm. So take for example the A1. The A1 lead that uh, goes all the way from uh, it starts from Lagos here and then terminates in uh, in Sokoto State. Between once you leave Ibadan and between Ibadan and Obomosho, it is a mass of tankers hmm. and trailers. Mm -hmm. There's a massive hold up there as we speak. And then you say we are serious about trade. These little things add to the cost of goods. Let us talk so about the fact the, that yeah. the, go ahead, the go two ahead. super two super agglomerates for trade in this country are Lagos and Onicha. Mm -hmm. Those are the two super agglomerates for all sorts of trade. Yet we don't have a real line co uh, connecting the two of them. We don't have plans for a real line. And the road, which is the uh, which is the A121, A232, is in very bad shape. Because I travel quite often. It's in very bad shape. Okay, so, um, so let's wait, look at um, <laughs> wait, wait, hold on, Cheta. Class. Okay. Uh, so, so Cheta, I hear you clearly. And I see that there's a lot that is going on, you know. But if I want to bring it back, because we have very, very short time. Like with you, there's never enough time. Mm. What would you say would be what we should look forward to? You know, if we say because from our quotes that we read today, independence is also almost like fairness as well. You understand that we're seen to be fair across board. And there's a lot of lopsided kind of um, activities going on right now in Nigeria. Do you understand? So if we want to say we want to practice true independence and we want to be seen across board, integrating all the things that you've said, which is completely true. I was born and bred in the north. I grew up completely in the north and all my life there. And there were a lot of companies there. People used to leave their states to go and work up north, you know. But those kind of things don't exist anymore because most of those companies are completely buried under the ground. So what do you think we should be looking forward to? How do we move forward? So, in the 1960s, there were three industrial layouts that were built by regional governments. Mm -hmm. You have the one at Oba Akram, which was built to compete with the one that was built by the Eastern Region Government at Transamati. And then in response, the Northern Region Government built Pompa. That is what we need. We need competition between the regions, fair competition. But right now, we have something called the exclusive legislative list that contains 68 items that can only be done by the federal government. Yeah. Why can I not do forensics without taking permission from Abuja? Mm. Ever since Abu Iranshi did Decree 24 of 1966, the, uh, sorry, Decree 34 of 1966, the, uh, the uh, unitary uh, government, we have been obsessed with central control, mm. such that Decree 24 of 1998, which we call a constitution, mentions productivity zero times, but has alludes to sharing a grand total of 26 times. Mm. Essentially, we are caught up in a situation where 
we are obsessed with centralizing everything, taking it all to Abuja to share, but the cake is dwindling and the number of people who want to share from that cake is growing. So what, the, what does that lead to naturally? It leads to shortage. And when you have shortage, it brings out the worst in people because they start fighting each other for those scarce resources. And when they start fighting each other for those scarce resources, you start, you start hearing cries such as marginalization mm. and uh, ethnicity and all of that. That <laughs> is the problem. Yeah. Nigeria needs to unleash its productivity. But the only way we will unleash the productivity of Nigeria is by burying Abuja. Wow. Mm. That's okay. the only so way. This, this, Until we bury Abuja, and when I say bury Abuja, I don't mean destroy it. Yeah. I mean reduce the powers of yeah. Abuja such that it cannot interfere in what the states are trying to do. Okay, Very exactly. good example. Tinapa. Okay. Pretty, pretty much every cross riverian that I have spoken to in cross rivers blames the southwest for the failure of Tinapa. Wow. Wow. Oh, yeah, Why? hold on. Okay. Because, uh, Shata, we have a comment on. Uh, go uh, ahead, quickly. Because okay, we have one a, minute to wrap this up. This is a comment from Chisom. He says, Hi, guys. This review today is quite disturbing because when you see what happens in the, in the developed world, you only but weep for Nigeria. We will continue this way till there is a deliberate shift. Thank you, Chisom. So, what is your take on that? What do you think? Chisom has said that you have depressed us this evening. Chita, <laughs> in but summary. But you did make some, yeah, I'm say some very um, I'm valid sorry. points. I'm yes, I'm like sorry. I, do, I do agree with you, Cheta, that um, uh, uh, economic uh, integration it's to very encourage key. trade is very, very important. important. And another thing that we need to look into, um, no thanks to our parents, is inter-ethnic marriage. If we would encourage it, it would help in bringing up um, unity in Nigeria because I am so pro-unity and it's just painful to see how we're just all right so just a one minute in one minute so yeah tell us one 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 encouraging news nigeria is here to stay okay okay that's it that's you it. look at yeah you look at yeah you look at the geopolitical the geopolitical prognosis and um it's not the best argument for nigeria to stay but geopolitically we are um when a situation where a breakup will not happen Absolutely. Um, if we try to if we if we try to do that, then it will it's the disadvantages of that, um, not just for us, but for the stability of the wider region, is such that nobody is going to let that happen. Mm. So, given that that is the fact, we just need to sit down, get honest with ourselves, and learn how to work with each other. Thank you so much, Cheta. Oh, yeah. That was a fantastic way to wrap Absolutely. up. <laughs> All right. So, what did someone says actually? Um, Lake. Lagos Lake Rice was a good sign of that integration that Cheta was talking about. Okay. It was a very good one, Lagos Lake Rice. But I think that's all we can take, ladies. We cannot take more comments. Well, comment but please question. watch a repeat broadcast of this episode tomorrow at 3 p.m. It's been a really, really insightful conversation. And keep all the conversations going on all our social media platforms at Wayshow Africa or at Plus TV Africa. Thank you so much again, Cheta, for joining us this evening. We have really, really had an insightful conversation. Now, in case you missed um, today's quote, here it is again. We are looking for our quotes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so in case you missed, let me, let me try to find our quotes today in case you missed it. Um, okay, I don't think they can find Okay, true, okay. The, true independence and freedom can only exist in doing what's right. So let's try as much as possible to do something right Absolutely. as a nation. Right. I love the fact of the economic integration. Sanzi, it would, I love it the would help a lot. I am uh, I am being You're already practicing it. Married so. to Adamawa, grew up in Kaduna. That's I a mean, lot like of there travel. are too many integrations <laughs> for me. So it's easy for me to understand what he's saying. Yeah. You know? mm -hmm. So I think it's very important that we do that. So thank okay. you so much everyone for watching. Thank you. Remember We'll see you live again tomorrow at 8 p.m. as we bring another great conversation to your screen. So see you tomorrow. <laughs>